Inshallah all our people online, Allah bless you, dress you and uh, mashallah great support, people sharing everywhere and alhamdulillah lots of people logging on and our life is, is based on training through fitna. Allah will test with fitna, the spreading of fitna and deceit and deception and whatever people want to call it, Allah wants to test the firmness of people in which they pay no attention to the fitna, if they got lost by that fitna or wait until the one whom is the king of fitna coming, they'll be lost in an instant. So life is continuously moving through the thorns of fitna being everywhere and to have istiqam. I don't know if you ever seen the martial arts fighting when they train, they have like this thing with all these hands at every level and this guy he's going so fast ducking, swinging, punching, ducking something coming at him, moving his head, why? Because from in every direction his opponent is going to hit him. It's not like a dance where I go like this and you return like this. Your opponent will come at you with every direction, with everything they have. So how do you train for something that comes to you at every direction in which you continuously have to be on the movement? The spiritual path is no different that you thought you were going to pick up a rose and then merrily skip and hop all the way into paradise. No. You were going to be beaten, you were going to be attacked, there were going to be wolves and werewolves sent after you and by the time you grab that rose there's nothing left of it, it's stuck in your pocket and you're running for dear life. It's not a path that's easy where you skip and hop and go to your destination, it's a path in which you agreed to struggle and fight in Allah's way and the shaitan agreed to take you down. So means that's why tafakkur, contemplation, firm connection and every fitna that comes just keep moving because your connection is strong. If your connection is not strong you take heed to the fitna huh? and you're already lost. And you were out in round one, some people last to round two, some people round, last to round ten. But you know you have to go the whole fifteen rounds, you're in it till you take your last breath and that was your da'wah on earth and you say, Alhamdulillah I reached. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. And that's our life is a life of struggle. And the only way to survive these difficulties on earth for the great, great fitnas that are coming is through the tafakkur and contemplation. It's like a lifeline and support. Like an astronaut you're connected to an oxygen and your shaykh and your connection is so strong that every type of deceit and deception your connection is strong and firm, not doubting, not this, not that. And that's the only way to survive these difficulties and we know with 35 years we're, we're under attack and from every direction, holy and unholy, inshaAllah. <clears throat>do the holy companions have one face with the Prophet and one face to the nation as a mirror from the kalima? Does this give rise to the split moon and form and veiling of haqq? Ooh, this is one of those like loaded questions of mixing this and that. <laughs> yeah. 
Prophet described that uh, one face with my Creator and one face to the nation and that's a deep reality that he has an association always in Divinely Presence and that can never break. <coughs> <coughs> One sec, <see. coughs> of one face to the Creator and one face to creation. And that the faith towards the Creator is a continuous support in which La ilaha illallah is continuously flowing a qudra to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah From the end of Muhammadun Rasulullah we are receiving. But between the hair of Allah and the mim of Muhammadun Rasulullah there's no break, there's nothing in that veil, not an angel, nothing of creation can reach that, that level because they become non-existent. Their existence is in Muhammadun Rasulullah from the mim down. They don't traverse over the mim into the hell of Allah hidayat of Allah So there's non-existence there. That's why La ilaha illallah means you don't even exist there. That's only for Allah to understand. Where, where did we exist then? When Allah wanted to be known as a treasure wanting to be known, creating Muhammadun Rasulullah Within that ocean we will get to know the realities of Allah the, the saints, the Sahabi, the Ahlul Bayt they have an eternal audience with Prophet and never broken. And that becomes the reality of the moon for them. They have one face of the moon in which nobody sees their reality, symbolic for us to understand. And the other face that they show to humanity. So the face of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq that is always with Prophet and has never been seen, I mean it's not for us to see that reality because we are not at that station. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the Holy Companions they're at a station in which nobody can see the reality because nobody is that high to do that. You only see at the foot of the one whom is above you. So their reality always in the, in the presence of Prophet and then they have a surah in which reaches out towards humanity and creation. So that every reality has a, a hidden reality and a known reality. So there's a face of the shaykh like the moon in which is seen by people. There's a face that they don't know and they have never seen and they don't know the reality of the shaykh. That's why when people come in and thinking they're trying to find the reality of the shaykh they can only find the reality of themselves. And even in their tafakkur they only see the reflected face of the shaykh, not the reality of the shaykh. The reality of the shaykh is for the presence of Prophet in which his nazar is upon that reality giving it its energies, the same system. Because they don't take from Allah they take from Allah's reflection to Muhammadun Rasulullah and as a result Prophet is the power. So after we describe the Rabb then we go back to Anzannahu fi Laylatul Qadr wa madraka Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr khayru min al fishad, tanazzal malaikati wa ruh bi idni rabbihim kullun am. By the permission of their Lord, permission of Allah, Atiullah, permission of Rasulullah 
and permission of Ulul Amri Mingo. Bi'ithni Rabb. So there must be always a permission of this qudra and power that coming down. So they're receiving from these energies and from these lights. That's why I said the depth of understanding Rabb is immense, immense. And that Allah throughout Qur'an uses the word Rabb and the Arabs who translated to bring deception, we love many Arab students we have, but this was an Arab deceit, right? It's not Pakistanis translating Arabic. It was the Arabs who came to them and said, no, no this word actually means this. And the lie and deception, that's what Dajjal means, to make lies and deception in the translations of words. So the concept of Rabb was an authority and that when Allah is pleased with the servant, He wants them to be kunun ma'a rabbaniyoon in which they learned the book and taught the book. Now go back and, and read what they translated for all these words of Rabb. When it suits them they say, Lord, when they can't explain it they say, Master. And the verses in Surah Yusuf are important because the Prophet of God is talking to prisoners about their king. Allah talks to the Prophet of Allah about his king and uses the word Rabb and in their tafsir they say, Master, which before they tell you there is no master, you can't have a master. Yeah, because the, the truth is there from Allah no matter what try to kuf they put upon it and try to hide it, it can't be hidden. And the one who understands authority then understands who is their authority. And we have to connect to the authorized reality and we connect with our authority. And from that authority they take us to the authority of Prophet And from the authority of Prophet you reach to the qudra and power of Allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyu nadheem Means there's no support and no help without this reality. And the only way to reach that support and help like a rope that we have to be at the hands of the authorized representatives that are taking from the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the hand of Allah and the hawla and quwwa begins to flow to them. For well, hawla and quwwa well, you're going to need to fight everything, to fight off shaitans, to fight off energies, to protect yourself, your home, your communities. You're going to need a lot of hawla and a lot of quwwa. But if you don't know how to hold that, well there's going to be a great uh, difficulty. So it's a wire that comes down. To Allah, Atiya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. If you hold the level of Ulul Amri Minkum, enough of the qudra flows to you to the level and ability that you can withstand. So these are very essential understandings and realities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum, Sayyidi. Walaykum as what is the reality of Allah choosing to guide and Allah to stop guidance? What can make an individual not eligible for guidance? Nahtadidan hadan Allah. What we say in Jummah, there's no guidance except when Allah guides His servant. And that has its darajats and levels of guidance. Guidance to leave shaitan, they slowly try to come towards Rahman. Guidance to live a life of good and not bad, then they come and try to stop doing bad, come towards good. But this level of guidance that Allah wants to give the servant a gift, it's a gift. You know, not everybody gets a gift, not everybody becomes a doctor, not everybody becomes a Nobel Prize winner. How, how shaitan has it in dunya that all these different darajats in dunya, 
Because Allah has infinite more darajats. Not everybody was born a Prophet because Allah gave them that reality in their soul. Not everybody born to be a saint because Allah gave that in their soul. Not everybody born to be righteous and pious but Allah wrote that upon their souls. So then this is a immense ni'mat and blessing from Allah And that's why then if it's a blessing from Allah don't, don't throw it back at Him in, in a bad way. It's not something you just, I don't want it and you, you keep treating it bad because you're angering Allah And that's when the servant loses that gift. The one who's not sitting there and the one who's not listening and the one who's not attending doesn't have that gift. So what does it matter what he does? So it's not enrolled, Allah didn't guide the servant, they don't know what they lost because they don't know, they're not a part of that reality. So we don't have to worry about that, Allah deals with each of His servants His own way. But the shaykhs are responsible for teaching that, my goodness if you think that you're being guided and you're being given all these realities, this is a gift from Allah an immense gift from Allah Now what do you do in that gift if you throw it on the floor and say, I don't want it? Do you, do you understand then the immense, immense insult that is to the Divinely Presence? That I, I gave you this gift and you're throwing it? Then you, you turn and, and bring out Allah's anger stuff Allah that nobody wants to do. And that's why the shaykhs keep teaching, this is a gift you know, this is not your cleverness that you turned on to this or, or you saw this uh, post or you saw that but once you find out later in life it's Allah's gift this guidance. I'm giving you the greatest gift I can possibly give you, the love of Prophet Now what are you going to do with my gift? You show your appreciation, you do your khidmat for it, why? Because that shows our love, Ya Rabbi thank you for this guidance. And I go out and I feed and do good and do all these good deeds. Why? To show Allah how much I'm thankful for the gift of guidance, how it blessed my life, blessed my eternal soul, blessed my eternal journey into the realms of realities. Which I can never thank Allah enough nor can I ever do anything to show my true gratitude. But I would never do something to throw it. People are, who, who have compassionate hearts, they're stuck on how to thank Allah for what they have been given. Not, not you know to, to, to be scared about, you know, the, am I insulting Allah by throwing it and kicking it to the floor and stuff for Allah. So that's what's being conveyed is that this is an immense gift. What are you going to do with it now? Especially when you, you see that. How many? Eight billion, seven billion people on earth. How many do you think Allah gave the gift of these knowledges, this reality and this love for Sayyidina Muhammad Well very few, very few. You can see it just by, you don't even hear it. You can see it by sending out posts and people getting angry. You can see it by not seeing it anywhere, not even hearing it anywhere. Few people, alhamdulillah. But that shows you then how precious the gift is. In dunya they want that like crazy. They say, this watch only one guy on earth has it. Then all these people start bidding for it. They don't want the one that everyone has, they want the one that no one has. They said, this car we made one of it. Then what, all the billionaires start calling, say, give me that. Then they start fighting each other that they want it so that they can show they have the one that only one is. They don't want something that everybody has. So then why is it the reverse for Allah? Then when you have a knowledge no one else has, you have teachings that no one else has, there are realities that not being spoken on this or people don't respect it, they think, no, no why, why do we don't do the, the one that's more common? Why are these things the, of any importance? Then you don't see its preciousness. But in the spiritual realm they treat it like that. Why? Because as soon as they speak and speak on these realities, all of the spiritual beings have to attend because for them those are like jewels, precious jewels that they place the value on it and they attend to these understandings and these majlis and the shaykhs speaking a lot for their understandings because they're of a spiritual nature and they absorb the realities. 
But the physical people, the dunya people they don't really understand, they would rather have what Mawlana Shaykh describes if you go to a child and say, would you like this hundred dollars or would you like this chocolate? The child would say, I want the chocolate please because it doesn't have an understanding of the hundred dollars. So spiritual gems are rarely understood by physical people. It's the spiritual beings that are all around waiting for the realities. For them these are very valuable precious jewels that they cherish and they can take a drop of it and expand its infinite realities and capacities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Shaykh, whenever I meditate, I tend to get muscle cramps on my head and eyes. Sometimes it is so painful, I have checked with the doctor and they just prescribe me with muscle relaxant. I feel that there is some spiritual reasons behind these cramps. Can you please talk on this subject? Thank you so much for your guidance. Walaykum As Salaam Yeah, I saw this email. That I don't know if the person's new because this is all we've talked about of energy that you have to get the meditation book and you have to understand energy and that anytime we're going to embark upon a energy practice you're going to have tawis, you have to understand washing and wudu and you have to understand that there are many spiritual energies inside and around people that they're going to be cleansed by eating good, washing, doing our prayers, making lots of salawats, making your connection, make sure that you have all your taweez, taweez on the windows, taweez upon the self and then you're now entering into an energy battle. So as soon as you start to meditate and contemplate you're asking for positive energy to come and negative energy to go. So what happens then? Well negative energy doesn't go very peacefully, it doesn't just say, oh, okay you, you want us out today? So if you look at the physical world, now they show in, in Los Angeles there are houses like multi-million dollar homes that they, the owner didn't even come back into town and they went into one house, they're filled with squatters. They had even parked the, how, the car like on a roof that they were throwing all their waste into the swimming pool because what do squatters do? They destroy everything. That's 90% of the people, 90% of people have squatters inside them. Beings that they pick up in every mall, in every store, at work and everywhere they go in life and these squatters are not leaving. They come through everything, through the food, the, everything is an energy and people pick up energy everywhere they go. So then they don't have taweez, they sell taweez, no we don't have taweez, then how you embark on spiritual practices with our ruqya and protections, oh but then they'll talk to two Wahhabis and say, no I don't want to wear taweez. So don't listen to those people because they're filled with, with the shayateen. So it means you put a ruqya upon yourself, you put the ruqya upon the house, the taweez is upon the house, you keep always in wudu, you make your salawats and now you practice your madad and asking for the madad of the shaykh and be prepared for energy disturbance. Place salawats in the room that you're meditating, make sure there's no creatures in that room and that you sanctify the space, perfume the space. Make isfan, if you're having energy issues then you make sure that you get the isfan. It's the wild ruh seed and you slightly burn it over tin foil and coal so it doesn't have a burn smell but a, a fragrance is released, not the, the like smoke of a fire. And you put this fan and now start to fight that energy. So yeah it's a whole spiritual practice, that's why you have to get the meditation book and do the practices and expect you know an energy battle, it's better to fight that now than in the grave. In the grave that's immensely difficult, there's no relief and people have to face their demons. At least when we do it in our living state we can be a little bit uncomfortable, we get up, get out of the room, take, drink some water and go back in for your battle. It's not a doctor issue, 
They said, you meditate, you're, you're not going to die that you run to a doctor to ask what's going on. You just sit there and, and fight the energy and do all the practices that are being told, get all of your, your tools that you need. Running to a doctor is only going to confuse you, there's not an energy, there's not an issue for a doctor. If you're just sitting around and having you know all these different types of things then you go ask a doctor. But if you sit just to meditate and then become attacked in a meditation, it's not a medical issue, these are energy issues. And this gives you a proof that, oh this energy is very real the shaykh is talking about. And then people start to feel things and touch of this thing and touch of that thing and they start to freak out and get, don't be, don't be scared. There's many, many energy beings all around and become familiar with it, don't be frightened by it and familiarize ourselves with these different creatures, beings and energies inshaAllah. Zishan, they're still biting you? <laughs> or you, you become comfortable with it and tell them, just don't bite that toe, bite the other toe. And don't be scared, don't be scared. That's the thing, people become scared and they say, well they wanted to embark on an energy practice. So then that's a part of the practice is Allah want the servant to, to fight these things, fight badness, negativities and push away all these negativities until we become more familiar with the positive. And the positive beings that are all around us to protect, they step back to see your ability to, to not have fear. So there has to be a cleansing phase, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So if a servant has a taweez, can he still have a demon inside him? He's always going to have his nafs and kareen. So the, the, the taweez is a, a sign of humility, the Ya Rabbi please that uh, with the authority that uh, you're sending and the authority given to Prophet and the authority given to these awliyaullah that uh, this is a sign of humility that I want from these realities. Then I keep my wudu, I keep uh, all my other practices and eating correctly, drinking correctly, everything that's in that meditation book, everything that's in the Sunnah of Prophet in regards to energies and the teachings of energies, sure that becomes then their continuous battle. The shaitan you don't put something on and it just goes away and runs away from you. You're now in a, in a battle with them. This is just one of the tools that you'll use to begin to fight and to protect yourself. So this is very important that all the practices are necessary and, and everything for us to, to build our energies, build our madad and uh, one shaitan may go, ninety shaitans may go but the stronger ones will stay and they're an authority over you. Now to say that there's a new sharif in town and everybody get out, not all of them run. So as soon as you find an authority that's why when, when shaitan is your authority which is 99.9% .9 of humanity right now they're not even human anymore, they've given complete authority to these demons. So they eat and act in, in ways that are not, no longer human. When that authority is within you, your life is to find a higher authority to resolve your issue, right? That's the purpose of this understanding of Rabb. Shaitan is definitely the Rabb of 99% of all people on earth. Who's going to take it away? Themselves? Can, can they be an authority over the authority of shaitan who's already running them? No, that's why self-help is a complete lie. How can you help yourself? You got yourself in this garbage to begin with, how are you going to help yourself? So that's not the sign of humility, sign of humility was, no Ya Rabbi I have to find your heavenly authorities, Ati Allah, Ati Ya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. My life is to find this ulul ams and take their hand and their authority is far more supreme than satanic authority. So they are sharif which is the name of the family of Prophet Right, that's where they got the word sharif from, the sheriff. 
right? Because they're Sharif. <laughs> <laughs> means that they come with a heavenly authority. As a result of heavenly authority, what happens? They come with a notice from the judge, get out, everybody has to vacate here. You put the ta'weez on, it's like a notice on the door, get out, you're not supposed to be in this premises, we're going to start doing things to you if you don't leave. Oh 90% of them go, they don't want any problems. The rest, then now the zikr, the aura, the meditation, is left there bi-idhnillah, why? Because if it was that simple nobody would practice anything, right? Allah could clear it in one shot, just let me see a sign of humility, boom put it on your neck, everything would be gone. But would that be teaching a person how to fish or that would be fishing for them? They're still gonna do all their bad things, they're gonna go do every forbidden thing and just put a ta'weez and it resolve it. No, the greater ones that they can't, they have no effect over, those things have to go. Allah leaves then a portion of that, now let's see if the student is going to build themselves. They're going to take you serious, they're going to start understanding your authority, they're going to start doing the practices that you're telling them to do. By doing the practices we're becoming samina watana, atana that we heard. And ati from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa Ulam minkum. Why was Samina Watan so important? That we heard and we obeyed. Because when you come to authority, you have to obey the authority. So don't put your face on Facebook, they put their faces on Facebook. They don't put your children on Facebook, they put their children on Facebook, then they email they're having problems. You have broken all the understanding of authority. So what type of authority you're trying to listen to? They say, don't do, you do it. You're not listening to any authority. So then become broken authority and Prophet is watching that they don't respect your authority because when they go back they say there's still problems for them, they have to go back to the king and say, I'm sorry but they didn't accept your authority. They didn't listen to me and they didn't accept your authority. So what does that say to the person? This is a problem. That's why when they come to guidance their life is to, samina watana, we hear and we obey. We're trying the best of in our ability to try and to resolve and to correct these issues for our love and respect for Prophet ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ said, don't, we don't. Then we can't come back and say, it's not working, we're having these difficulties. So we took every prescription and we try to impose that upon our life. And that becomes a person whom obeys authority. What happens if they obey authority, obey authority, obey authority? What now happens to their status in the presence of Prophet They become what? Ulul Amr. Why? Because they follow the Amr, their Rabb. What we describe was Amr. Amr is the Atiullah Alif, Atiya Rasul Mim, wa Ulul Amri Minkum the Ra. So when they follow, they're following the command of Allah, Prophet and the Ulul Am which is coming to you through the tongue of the Ulul Am. When they follow the Amr, follow the Amr, they're becoming the people of following the Amr. They become the Ulul, the people of the Amr, the command. They follow the commands to the best of their ability, not everything is perfect. But they're following the, the commands to the best of their ability. And then Allah begin to dress them to be from Ulul, the people of the Amr. And then Allah activate their Ra and they become Rabbaniyoon, lordly. And Allah gives that title in Qur'an, not calling them gods, so it has nothing to do with being creator and not having anything to do with worshipness. Kunuma Rabbaniyoon was what? Surah Ali Imran 3. And is it 79? 
check 379, wa which one was the ayat kareem? Al Imran. Is it 379? Ukunuma Yes. Recite Yes, Sayyid. Recite. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ma kana li basharin an yu'tiyahu Allahu al-kitaba wal hukma wal nabuwa thumma yaqula lil nas kunu ibadan li min dunillah ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون صدق الله العلي العظيم Allah the Rasul Kareem So it has nothing to do with being worshipped. This is a title Allah gives to creation. Is your highest title be Rabbaniyoon. So it means they have to achieve that Ra and by following the commands of the Rabbaniyoon, they are following the command of the Muhammad the meme Muhammadiyoon and as a result that is following the Alif and Izzatullah. And they become the Ulul Amr and they become in the association of Ulul Amr. Not the, the, the people who do disrespect and, and negate every… every uh, every command or every order or every guidance that come to them, they're being monitored in everything and as a result their darajahs rise with their monitoring inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Sayyidi if we give sadaqah what way does this increase our energy? The energy is in the law of energy. If you have 100 volts of negative charge, how can you feel anything positive for example? I'm just I'm filled with negative charges from everything and all around and deeds and this negative charge if I leave it on me they begin to make me want to talk negative, my vocabulary changes. Eat negative because the negative charge is pushing me towards not eating correctly, uh, want negative, everything is now influenced by this negative charge. And we gave this in the talks of increasing your positive actions how to make an account every day of, did you do good? You count it as ten. So Allah gave us sadaqah, that at night you count and say, this just feel so negative, give your sadaqah. That something in your charge is wrong, maybe you're not accounting for all the bad you do all day long and you didn't really do anything good, then give sadaqah, it'll balance the account and purge the negative charge from the servant but it requires faith because shaitan comes, oh you give sadaqah you won't have money in your account. <laughs> but they have to have faith and say, no, no Allah is great, whatever you give is never wasted in Allah's way. But it will purge this negativity, someone did negative in the house, go give sadaqah. The children are doing negative in the house, you give sadaqah, don't let bala come onto their head. You give sadaqah on their name. Why? It takes away difficulty. Do good, you do, do well. Every time somebody's drinking from it, it's been written onto your name, to your family, to whoever you dedicated that. Become a jari, a continuous flow of blessings upon the person. So, no, of course, any charity we do, goodness that we do, praying that we do, salawats that we do, water feeding, all of these, they give us hasanat, goodness, and Allah multiplies by ten the goodness. So anytime I put a hundred good on me that night and I was at a hundred negative, what happens? I pushed out the negative charge and then I become lighter and cleaner. So it cleans you, that's why zakah is zaki is purification. 
So the ones whom they give and charitable and serve and do khidmat, they don't have that heaviness and their accounts become excess positive, excess positive because of their khidmat and their way of life in which they have so much barakah in their accounts that it begins to go off to their families and children and communities. When you have no barakah on your account then it's all about your negativity being lifted. But when you follow their system then you're in a continuous daily doing these good things then daily your accounts are being filled with positive charge, positive charge. It's like excess positive, we even talked about that in the systems of uh, satellite dishes and power plants. Means that your, your system is only as good as the battery that can contain the charge you made but your heart is an infinite battery. As much as you put good Allah will keep that hisab and keep the account. Now imagine those accounts are filled with goodness, it starts to flow to all of your descendants living and not living because it's just overflowing fountain of realities and lights and blessings. So this is a, a lifestyle in which to do these good deeds and live a life continuously doing these deeds and every now every night taking a hisab that uh, what the kids did was not nice and I don't want difficulty upon them. And they give and the, it's the same system the shaykh's doing, the shaykh knows he has many students not doing anything right. So they do many good deeds, many good actions, many good uh, projects. So that Prophet will be happy with them, forgive and, and to wipe the accounts. So you're following the system of the shaykh, if the shaykh does nothing then you probably will learn to do nothing and you just become people who, who say one thing but do nothing. But if you follow their system that's their system that they was taught to them is do not because of yourself but because the community you represent they need good deeds to be presented to Prophet so they take the initiative to do the water, to do the food, to do the maulis, to do all of these and they present these on a nightly basis that Prophet and for the sake of this and for the sake of those whom are not doing good, forgive them and inspire them towards goodness inshaAllah. This is our, our life system inshaAllah should work to take away every type of negativity. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yaseefoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.